Well, hello folks and welcome back to my Crafted Replications. This is going to be the last in the series of the Tudor Lodge. There's uh, going to be more needs done to it as you can probably see in tinkering here and there and what have you. But the basic structures are done and hopefully it's been helpful to anybody that's interested in doing something similar. I mean, it was good fun to make so it was and I enjoyed it so it did. And uh, I want to take this opportunity to say thank you to everybody that has watched it and for all the subscribers and i'm really chuffed to bits so i am and um the uh the amount of views we're getting at the moment is just well surprising me to be honest with you but uh i say this is the last and it's a bit mixed and matched this year last video but um i didn't want to just leave it the way it was so uh i'll leave you to it and hope you enjoy it all right all the best see you later thank you Here folks are going through the um the process <laughs> the process of weathering which we haven't done before. Um I watched a lot of videos on it and um I think it's gonna be a case for me anyway of uh trial and error. So I'm starting off with uh, a medium orange which has been diluted quite a bit with um thinners i'm going on it's looking well to me so it is but on camera you can't really see anything but i'll show the process i'm using and then i'll go into the darker colors after that and try and give the effects of dirt and rain and so on we'll see how we go <laughs> Now what I have learned through the videos is um, it's all about the subtle differences not like you know the, the heavy differences and um, water always runs down obviously so it does so to try to give the effect of like the wear and the water and the dirt coming down the way um, as I say <laughs> it doesn't look anything off camera or on camera but it does I don't know if I zoom in if it will make any difference like but we'll try and see mm, I can see the subtle differences because I know where they are but it might be hard for you but maybe when I put the darker colours on for runs down here and so on and dirt catching in the corners um, you might see it a bit better then but I, I think that's um, in real life I think I'm happy enough for that there it's given it like a um, again you can't see on camera but it's given it like a burnt orange effect around the edges and so on it just makes it look more oldly worldly more used than brand new but uh we'll keep on going i'll bring you back later on so well all right thanks just a bit of green here dry stippling on don't want to add too much because as I say everything that I've watched on YouTube says it's a, the finest of touches less is more <laughs> Where I'm trying to get a lot of the effect is round by the windows, and you know, where as I said earlier, where the the water tends to, to run.
and this is just acrylic I'm using just trying to keep it as dry on the brush as possible dogs kicking off as usual That's how you cut off a roof. Right, I just tried this video <laughs> a minute ago with my other spray gun, but didn't work with well, so it. Um, burnt umber, with a bit of thinners. I uh, changed my spray gun to my, the better one. It's still not coming through. Here we go. Only a spray gun here I'll be using with the ordinary compressor. This is just a wee compressor off the other gun, so I'm just gonna see how it pans out with that. about the spray gun it gets into every wee nook and cranny And I think of that folks, I've blended in all my mistakes the best I can. Right folks, I'm just uh, putting the glass in the place here. I'm using glass on the ground floor only. Um, only because I was a bit concerned if uh, one of the sections, the top sections falls off, then um, it's more likely to smash. Um, with glass in it but so for the top sections I'll be using acrylic and just glass for the ground floor here and it's cut just an oil knife um, a, a I know it's an oil glass cutter but sure any glass cutter would do you you can even get it cut the size at your local glazer suppose if you ask them hold that in place
two dabs of hot glue. That's in case at some point that you want to take it back out again or if it gets cracked then it's easy enough to replace so it is. Um, any cleaning up to do, try and do it while the glue is still hot. Obviously it can be done at a later time so it can. And um, mine's being held on the sander so it is as well. So you need to have a hot glue there. You have a hot glue there. And then my sander strip goes down to glue, glue to both top and bottom. Also helps support the glass. Not to glass in. I'll carry on around the rest of it, and uh, I'll bring you back whenever it's all in. All right. Just measuring up here so I am for the the length of the window, which I already had, but now I've forgotten. Not much luck with the ruler, so we'll use the stick again. Again, firm pressure down. I don't think this looks very good. Uh, I have cut quite a bit of glass, but I just seem to struggle with 2mm glass. And as all these are being faced off, none of this will be actually, actually seen. There we are. In. A bit of hot glue. Just 
just two of the corners again in case you do want to remove these glass. Is that that right? Jobs are good. So I'm just finishing off with um, the chimney pot here. I actually looked into it, and chimney pots actually were invented in Tudor times, believe it or not. So, this is my interpretation for my house that I'm building, but sure, you can do any one you want. Um, I'm gonna sit there like so, two chimney pots, two fires. Uh, give it a wee rub down and uh, a wee coat of paint, bit of blending, and that'll be that. And I'll come back to you shortly. As I said at the start, now that chimney's on, I think that there's going to do us for an eye, even though there's a lot more to be done. Um, but I'm going to be running out of um, the video, will just like go on forever, so it will honestly. So I'll just send some updates on um, Instagram, and I'll put a wee link to that there as well. I'll do a wee tour now and leave it there. Thank you.